here's an overview of the year that changed my life. I do Embassy Ball, which is a competition here by the LAX airport. Didn't realize the executive producers of Dancing with the Stars was gonna be there. Then they see what they see, they like it. I get a phone call from this Australian man who said we would love to audition you. I just sneak out of my little shoebox of a hole that I lived in and I did this audition. So I get the job and then it's history. <laughs> So imagine this, you're sitting in your tiny shoebox of an apartment in Harlem and you get a phone call asking you to be a part of a hot new TV show. But saying yes means moving across the country, leaving behind your significant other and all the plans you've had for your career for something you're not even sure will work out. Would you do it? Well, that's exactly what happened to me and even though I think we all know what I ultimately did, I bet you'll be shocked to know I was so close to saying no to Dancing with the Stars. So the year my life changed would be 2005. I was living in Harlem at the time with my dance partner slash boyfriend in a box, literally maybe 700 square feet. And the only thing separating us was the bathroom. So I get a call. The first season of Dancing with the Stars has already been premiered and wrapped and I get a call from one of the executives to see if I would come in for an audition. Basically, you know, because I was in this relationship with my dance partner and I also just turned professional, like there's this thing in the competition world where you don't want to be out of sight and out of mind, right? You need to constantly play the circuit and play the field. So honestly, I looked at the first season and I thought, oh, this was kind of like cheesy a little bit, but like I knew that you know, this could be an opportunity. I know my mom deep down inside really wanted me to do it, but you know, there's that like scared little girl inside me that was like, don't leave whatever you do, because if you leave, you know, your whole partnership and relationship can just be done in, the, in a moment, right? You know, I just thought for sure my time here in Los Angeles would be very temporary. Like I was gonna go back to the competition circuit and that was it. I wouldn't be here right now with you guys if I said no. And I was so close to saying no, like to the point where these executives were calling me after I auditioned and was like, you know, we love you. We think you'd be a great addition to the show. I waited until like the last second, the last moment to accept the offer. And look where I am now. I'm kidding. <laughs> so the audition process was really scary for me because you know, back when I was like 20 and I was living that competition life, I was very introvert, right? So I never had an opinion, nor was I asked for one. And I was very much um, a follower. I was definitely not a leader. Didn't even know what my favorite color was. So the fact that like I had to go to an audition, put a costume on with my short little bob, and I had a borderline English accent, not sure where that came from. And I had a mousy voice. And whenever they'd ask me like, a question like, say your name, where you're from, give me three personality traits that you're most proud of, or say that you're a champion. It was so hard for me to do these interviews and to even do the audition. If you look back at the audition tape, it's quite hysterical. On the dance floor, I'm very wild, aggressive, and sexy, but off the floor, I'm very to myself, mostly like an all-American girl. Like, I seriously sound completely different. I clearly didn't talk much back then. And it's crazy how Dancing with the Stars has helped me um, shape, I guess, the woman I am today. And I'm very now opinionated and I definitely um, can be outspoken and I can definitely tell you what my favorite color is. And today, it's this color. Changes every day. <laughs> So two executives from Dancing with the Stars came to New York to interview me. They asked me a lot of questions about myself. He asked me to do a couple of moves, but within like the frame of the camera, which was really hard. And I didn't really have like a lot of makeup on. And I just like came in with the costume that they saw me actually compete in. That's how they scouted. So they saw me dance at a competition in Los Angeles with my partner. And after they saw me dance and they realized, oh, she's not European. She actually is American. I think that helped as well as me being Asian. But at the end of the day, I was so nervous. I was dying inside and I thought for sure there's no way in hell I got the job. So um, when I got the call that they want me to be a part of season two, I didn't even know how to react. I was nervous because then I had to, I think I didn't even tell my partner I auditioned to be honest. I think I just went and, and did it and then like came home as if I just ran an errand. And my mom was very happy. I remember running to my dance coach um, and he was like, how the hell are you gonna teach somebody 
quick step when all you do is like the Latin dances. And I'm like, I have no idea. So I basically, like the first few seasons of Dancing with the Stars, I learned as the seasons went by, right? Like there were dances that I had no clue about. Like when it comes to the ballroom and standard dances, like I couldn't tell you what the guy did, but I just had to kind of like make those mistakes in order to learn and educate myself. You know, my partner said, go ahead, do it. He actually came to visit me when I danced with Drew Lachey. And I get to Los Angeles, that same day I had to go to Enterprise and rent a car and it was a little red Honda Civic. I roll up to meet my partner, not knowing it was Drew. All I know is that they asked me if I had any flip flops in my suitcase and I was like, no. Like I only wear heels for people that know me. I opened the door and it was Drew Lachey, who's not very tall. I'm 5'4", he's 5'5", five five. no I'm kidding, maybe 5'6". But I'm glad I didn't walk in with my like big wedges, but um, I remember doing the first meet, like literally I landed as I had to do that. I was wearing actually a similar colored top, I believe, jeans and flip flops. My legs are short, never a good look on me, but I remember how nervous I was. I met his whole family, Nick Lachey was there, and um, we had to do an interview, right? So. It was like us getting to know each other, but everything was on camera. I was mute. Like I had nothing to give. I had nothing to contribute. And I was like, you answer the question. You answer the question. Four out of 30, even with a flu and a bad shoulder this week. Yeah, uh, I don't know what to say. I had all these like little witty one-liners to come back with, but I you know they kind of <laughs> caught me off guard with the, with the praise. So just gonna have to come back next week and uh, try and try and improve on it. And I just remember being so camera shy. And then as soon as the cameras were off, I had so much to say. It just showed me like, wow, I need to grow up here and no longer live in people's shadows. Like I need to be able to form an, my own opinion. I need to be able to talk with confidence. I need to be able to look into someone's eyes and have a conversation, you know? And I feel like Dancing with the Stars groomed me in a way to be able to do that and find my own voice. I think right away as I moved here and I did the second season, it was um, quite a shock to my system because not only were we all living like Melrose Place, all of the dancers were experiencing this amazing like fame, I guess you could say, that you don't have to wait in lines and go to clubs. Like everything was just given to us, right? So like, I remember all of us like sneaking into each other's apartments, partying every night, enjoying this time. Like this like went from literally just this competition world, which was is very intimate and which is amazing, not saying it's bad, but then like all of a sudden like being recognized, there's paparazzi. So there was like lots of attention and I, me being an introvert, I had to hit the bottle because this was too much to handle and like all these red carpet events. Then I won my first season. And then with that came more attention. And like, then I was like, wait a second, I'm supposed to go back to Harlem. I'm supposed to like go back and live that competition lifestyle. And wow, did I have a change of heart pretty fast, you know? And it's not because of the fame. I think it was because it felt so good to feel independent and not depend on anybody for anything as far as, you know, just life in general. Like I didn't have to depend on anyone for their opinion or be a follower. I could actually lead my own life. And I was just, there was a lot of uh, self exploration, I guess I did during those first few years of like, okay, what is it like to be a grown up really? And this was like, I never went to college. So coming to Los Angeles and those first few seasons of Dancing with the Stars was like all of us being in a fraternity and like just having the best time of our lives every single night. Those were the good old days. Honestly, looking back, I can't even imagine how different my world would be if I had said no to Dancing with the Stars. I feel like I would have had a completely different life and who knows if I would have ever found the courage to put myself out there and make videos here for you guys. To say that I'm glad I said yes is a total understatement. Have you ever had a moment like that where if you made a different choice, your life wouldn't be remotely the same? Let me know in the comments below, please. And if you enjoyed this video, it would mean so much if you hit that thumbs up, like this video, hit that bell notification and subscribe to my channel. I've got so much exciting videos coming up, new content, and I cannot wait to share them with all of you. Sending you all so much love and light. Bye.